Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something called Vital by developer Synthetic. Uh, this is my first video since I got back from PAX, so it's actually really good to be back in the swing of things, getting back to recording and all of that good stuff. And this one is a bit of an interesting predicament as far as games go. Uh, it's a first-person puzzle platformer, well, heavily leaning on the platformer side of things. In fact, so far that it might go to being sort of a massacre first-person platformer, which is a thing I haven't really seen anybody attempt. And this is a very early alpha slash preview demo of it, so, you know, not all of the experience might be indicative of the final version. Uh, but I wanted to show it to you because I think it has a really cool art style, but it's also kind of infuriating, and I just wanted to uh, get that point across before we get into things. Uh, and before you leave your hateful comments saying how terrible I am at video games, I'm completely aware, but I'm going to try my best to hopefully do it right, and you'll see it's not an easy challenge, even the very first thing you're asked to do. And I'm not 100% sure I even know what I'm doing properly to make sure I'm doing it in the right way. Anyway, let's look at the options, and then I will start up the episode. So we've got... Well, we're really almost no options. We've got just uh, different screen resolutions, and that's, well, that's okay. Uh, there's not even an option to just switch to windowed, really, even though it says windowed, I have to hit uh, Alt-Enter, which is a wonderful shortcut that I learned about at one point. Okay, so here we go. We spawn into this very interesting-looking, surreal world where everything is orange and white, and I actually find it quite visually striking. In fact, it's rather entrancing. I really like the look of this game in general. Uh, and what's ahead of us seems to be sort of a Super Mario Sunshine-esque pl uh, platforming puzzle. So if I take a step forward, you will notice a little text box pops up, says, Who are you? Doesn't matter, we need to keep moving. See that platform above you? Oh yeah, I guess I see it. You need to reach it. Use these instructions to overcome any obstacles. Okay, so this is all we've got to learn, really. WASD for movement, E to use or interact. And then we've got left mouse to grab, right mouse to push. And then mouse look, of course. Good luck, I'm counting on you. Fair enough. So worth mentioning, that little tutorial scene, albeit very short, actually does appear every single time, at least as of this alpha version. Uh, so get used to it. We'll be clicking through that a bunch of times as I fail this. So I guess I'll show you what I thought was to be the thing that I needed to do, and then I'll try and do it more correctly if I can actually pull it off the way that I thought was supposed to be done. Uh, and also, if I want to, I'll show you I can pick up these boxes on occasion. There we go. Uh, it works every so often. I don't know if it's just me or what, but uh, I don't really have regular success with moving objects in this game. Uh, it seems like it happens about once out of every six or seven times that it'll actually pick up. So white boxes, as you can see, uh, well, you will see anyway. They fall, all of them, that, well, Except for this one, for some reason. Uh, but when I jump over here, I've got to be prepared to instantly jump away, or that's going to tumble away. And then we can click through this again. So we've got to line this up so the left rotating box is going to be in the right position. And then I need to hope that as I jump off of it, my weight and momentum doesn't carry me down uh, and cause me to fall. Because, you know, that's the only chance I get. Uh, so wait for it. Jump. Oh, did it again. Your timing has to be pretty spot on, otherwise you'll just be carried right down through the box, and it won't provide any cushioning for you to get another jump. And you do need that second jump, see, because then we need to make it up here. Now for the second one, we need to make sure we're at exactly the right moment, and then we need to jump right off it, and then that vanishes as well. Uh, if I take slightly too long on that second box, it'll actually just dump you off into the abyss which is rather unfortunate. You don't have any time to stop and think. So now we're presented with the next puzzle of things that I don't really know what to do with. So we've got this little, uh, almost like a Half-Life logo thing of two uh, orange rectangles conjoined, and then we need to find our way up onto this elevating platform. Now the problem with this scenario is, while well, I'm standing on orange, this is white, that's white. Both of these platforms fall away if I try to step on them. So you'd probably think, well, maybe I need to like go grab and slide one of these away. Alright, sounds fair, except I can't get close enough to do that. So what's the next process in this line of thinking? Well, jump wildly and hope something cool happens, I suppose. No, that never really works out. Uh, so then, we go to step three, which is now we try and carry one of these boxes, which completely obscures our vision, and hopefully we can make it through the same puzzle platforming challenge. And this is where things start to get a little complicated. Now... The reason, and you're probably wondering if I'm being so negative on this, why do I even care to make a video, because I'm usually very positive on things. Um, I actually think this game has a ton of potential, and I'm really interested in seeing where it goes. I just think that things like the ability to see 
uh, and perhaps being slightly more forgiving on some of these jumps or, or maybe fixing whatever the issue is that's causing me to fall through the, the platform immediately. That stuff all needs to get sorted out. Uh, but once it is, I think there's going to be some very cool stuff here. And I've seen the trailer of this. I've seen later areas, and they look fantastic. Uh, there's a bunch ahead of us that I really want to show you guys if I can make it through this pl uh, platforming challenge, but I've never actually done it despite trying about... Well, okay, I didn't make the first jump on that one. I think I've tried about 50 times now, and I've never been able to actually pull this off and actually make it up to the platform, although I have a, what I think to be an okay idea of what I need to do. Uh, it's just there's so many variables that all have, like, slightly iffy collision issues with them that they add up to being, well, I just missed the jump so many times. And before anybody out there says I'm just horrible... I mean, fine, that might be valid, but I definitely recommend that you go try this for yourself as well. Okay, that time you can say I'm horrible because I just literally didn't jump. Uh, I was a little too late on the jump there and just fell off, partially because I can't see where I'm going. Uh, so we're going to lower this down a little bit. Now you got to wait for the timing. This wouldn't be such a big problem if the timing wasn't such a factor and just didn't jump again. I think sometimes the box that I'm holding in front of me can drag on the ground or cause mid-air collisions that just make me fall. So that's also a bit of a prop. See, I think that's what happened right there. I just kind of tripped over nothing. And it seems like I'm grabbing the boxes more consistently, but once I drop it on the ground, all bets seem to be off. All right, so we're just going to try this flatter rectangle and see if this one works a little bit better. Okay, didn't shift at all to the left that time, which is really unfortunate. All right, we're just going to chuck that one out. We'll just use this one maybe from now on, unless I get lucky with the other... Okay, there we go. It sits a little further away from my viewpoint, which helps me out quite substantially. You know, I was actually pretty good at first-person platforming games. Mirror's Edge, definitely one of my jams. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Even uh, going all the way back to the old days of the N64, there were a lot of like platforming sections in the old Turok game. That was way too late. Yeah, the timing on jumping from the first rotating to the second one is very unforgiving. You get, like, about a second and a half, and if you don't nail it right then, well, the momentum's off, and you just hit the end and fall. Uh, so, I don't know. I feel like for the very, very first puzzle challenge, you should really have a slightly more forgiving thing, just to get you in, so you can at least see, like, what's to be expected of you as you go forward. See, once I drop this thing, I can rarely ever pick it up again without doing some weird fidgeting and canoodling, which I don't think should be necessary. Uh, this is an Unreal Engine game, so I'm not sure how much of that plays into these slight collision issues and such. Uh, I, not that I think that, like, necessarily Unity would be all that much better, but, you know, I just wonder... Oh my god, what? That should never have happened. I believe I stuck this through the platform and then used it to leap off of. So, yeah. Alright, so now the next unfathomable action that I need to perform is I need to rest this box down on the edge, and I need to jump on it without overjumping, which is easier said than done. Now, if I'm close enough, I might be able to grab one of the edges, and I don't want to fall off this. Grab one of the edges. There we go. That's what we're after. Now I want to lay it down gently across this gap, which is next to impossible because I don't have enough control. Oh, please, just let me have this. Oh, it's gonna... Okay, that actually might work. Looks like a couple sweet potato fries lay in there, doesn't it? Uh, now, if I can get on here, I might be able to move one of these over. Okay, please don't miss this jump. I missed the jump. Oh, the platforming controls are not precise enough for this. I'm sorry. I really want to do better. I want to show you guys. It's so cool looking. At the very least... If you get nothing from this video, I recommend that you go check out the Greenlight uh, video page, or the Greenlight page and video trailer that accompanies that page, uh, because it's pretty sweet looking. I really do recommend it. I actually managed to get all the way back all of a sudden. Uh, and I think there is a market out there for games like this, because I haven't really seen any uh, that are this difficult. Oh no, you laid it down wrong, man! Alright, let's see if I could just fall. Okay, that worked. Perfect. This might be the run. I think that there are people out there who are crazy enough to be into something like this like I am. And if they are, they're going to be very satisfied that something like this could exist. Now, there's a little bit of contra... Oh, no. Oh, no. Ugh. All hope is lost. 
There was a little bit of controversy I noticed on the green light page. Yeah, once I jump, I fall until I land on it again, and then I... Well, I guess I can use this as a downward elevator or something. That's pretty interesting. Uh, the developer had said that there's not going to be a save system in this game intentionally as, like, an immersive effect. And it seemed like every single person that read that was not happy about that news. I'm not really sure how I feel about it, actually. I could see kind of going either way with it. I would obviously prefer just in general that there'd be a save system, but also, you know, it's the developers design their, uh, their vision, and they can make decisions as they see fit, and if they think that this is the type of uh, setup they want to go for, well, you know, maybe that's uh, crazy enough to work. I do feel like it would probably piss off more people than would enjoy that experience, considering, uh, well, the game might be several hours long and also very difficult, so if you uh, mess up too many times... Oh my god, I got freaking crashed into on that box there. Yeah, if you mess up too many times and you just have to rage quit, you're going to be kind of sad to not be able to resume where you left off, right? I mean, that's kind of common sense, I suppose, but at the same time, you know, nobody really takes chances like that, so I have to reward the fact that somebody wants to go through with something a little bit uh, outside of the box, per se. Oh, this game's so pretty, I just want to see more of it. I'm tired of the stupid one challenge. It also seems to have branching paths from what the developer indicated, so that's also a thing. I guess there's multiple directions you could take things to... Okay, I'm just tripping over the box as it collides with the floor. That's kind of garbage. Uh, yeah, so there's a number of ways you could proceed. There's a number of different styles of puzzles. In fact, some of them might be, the developer admitted, downright illogical, which I'm kind of okay with. I kind of am interested to know what that means exactly. Ugh. I don't know, guys. I really wanted to be the very best, like no one ever was, and finish this single challenge. I believe that my general strategy will work. But it's very difficult, like I said. So I need to get over here. We'll give it one more shot at the Sweet Potato Fry Land. Oh, well. Disaster. Everything's terrible. I've fallen to my death. And this will be probably the least gameplay progress in any Indie Impressions video that I've ever made. And if that is the case, my apologies, everyone. I hope that you will go check this game out, though. Again, the name is Vital. And I will have a link to the download for this as well as the green light page if you wanted to show support. I'd be very interested in hearing the opinions of anyone who has also attempted this, whether or not, uh, as to whether or not they find some of these gameplay decisions to be rather frustrating or maybe, you know, lack of revision, being that this is an alpha again, you can't really be too frustrated in total. Uh, but things like the lack of transparency on the boxes you're holding, the somewhat inconsistency as it pertains to. Uh, being able to pick things up, the somewhat inconsistency as it pertains to colliding with platforms as you're trying to jump across them, uh, having to reactivate the tutorial every time, things like that. I also do uh, want to admit that I sort of woefully didn't use the push option as much as I probably should have. There's a chance that might have helped me out in some of these scenarios. I guess I'm giving it one more shot because I really want to be successful. Ah, uh, well, I timed it poorly there. Anyway, it's a very cool-looking game. I have high hopes for it. I just think there needs to be a little bit of work still done on it. Anyway, I hope you do leave this with a general positive impression, even though it seems like I had a lot of negative things to say. Uh, I generally won't cover a game if I don't see some redeeming uh, aspect or element to it, and I do see plenty of redeeming aspects here. Uh, I just need things to get a little bit more fleshed out, and that's okay because it's an alpha. So, without going in circles, I think that's where we're going to wrap things up. So, thank you as always, everyone, for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like on it. If you hated the video, consider leaving a dislike on it, I suppose, because what am I going to do, right? Uh, voice your opinions. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate any feedback that I get, and I do read every single comment. So, if you're interested uh, in speaking with me in one way or another, feel free to let me know what you think. As well as, uh, feel free to voice any opinions to the developer, too, in the event that the developer is... Uh, keyed into this video existing. I always love to have these dialogues and people watching and giving feedback and such, and, you know, things can evolve from there. And again, links are all going to be in the description, so give it a download. Try it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. See what you think, and then feel free to let me know after that. Uh, so I will be back again tomorrow. New episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day. If you enjoy what you see here, and if you enjoy the concept behind finding out about a new artistic, original, or unique indie game every single day, consider subscribing to my channel, youtube.com slash rockleysmile, for updates on all of the new posts that happen. Uh, so I will be back with lots more videos. Hope you have a fantastic day. 
and I will talk to you later.